I'd like to uh, welcome all of you who are joining us for this hour of prayer as we celebrate the beginning of Holy Week with Passion Sunday. Uh, just a word, we don't know how long this is going to last, but we are also going to video Easter Sunday in case some of you cannot be with us on Easter Sunday uh, because of uh, the virus. So you could watch Easter Mass at home. So thank you. And let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mercy of the Father, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery with prayer, fasting, penance, and charity. Today, with the whole church, we mark the beginning of the most holy week of the Christian year, celebrating Christ's passion and resurrection. It was to accomplish this mystery that Jesus entered his own city of Jerusalem. With all faith and devotion, we therefore commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and life. Like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us sing our praise to Christ, the King of Kings. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as an example of humility and patient endurance, our Savior, Christ our King, took flesh and submitted to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of forbearance and obedience and by your grace come to share in his resurrection. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we listen to our sacred scriptures.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from insults and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Your attitude must be Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not regard equality with God something to be exploited. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting death even death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him a name that is above every other name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. The word of the Lord. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time draws near. In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of the Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. 
But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Though all have their faith in you shaken, mine never will be. And Jesus said to Peter, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Jesus came with the disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to feel sorrow and distress. He said, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time. Then he returned to his disciples saying, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived together with a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them saying, the man I shall kiss is the one, arrest him. Immediately Judas went over to Jesus and said, hail rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered, friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. One of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its sheath, for all who live by the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father to provide me at this very moment more than 12 legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber 
with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has to come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? Now you have heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him. Some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean, but he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely, you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. And at that, he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately, the cock crowed. Then, Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. This is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me.
Jesus was brought before the governor, Pontius Pilate, who questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But Jesus did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner of their choosing. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when the crowd had assembled, Pilate said to them, who do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message saying, have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for the release of Barabbas and to destroy Jesus. The governor said to the crowd, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, we want Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, crucify him. But Pilate said, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd. He said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then Pilate released Barabbas to them. And after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak around him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, 
they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his garments amongst themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let God deliver him now if God delights in him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion, and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly. And when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, they said, truly, this was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a very short reflection after listening to that story of the passion of Jesus and uh, a powerful story. It is really the heart of the sacred scriptures for Christians. So let me tell you another story that's true. Uh, it's about Jason Tusks. 
He was a 17-year-old honor student living in Florida with his mom and his dad, who was in a wheelchair, and his younger brother. And Jason was an expert swimmer, and he loved to scuba dive. So one day, he left the house and, uh, to explore a spring in an underwater uh, cave near his home. But he planned to be back in time to have dinner to celebrate his mother's birthday together with his dad and his brother Christian. But as he was exploring the cave, he got lost. And in his panic, he apparently got wedged into a narrow passageway. And when he realized he was trapped, he shed his yellow metal air tank, took his knife out, and with the tank as his writing tablet and the pen uh, being the knife, he wrote his last message to his parents and it simply said, I love you, mom, dad, and Christian. A dying message that something communicates something important in the last seconds of life. This young man was communicating to his parents and brother how much he loved them. And we get the same message as we reflect on the crucifixion today and on Good Friday, that God's final words are etched on a Roman cross. And those words are blood red. And they say, I love you. And let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. The resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And let us pause to make our universal prayers known praying for the church, praying for all those who are suffering around the world, praying that we may experience God's healing love For all of God's people, baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ, teaching and witnessing in the name of Jesus, may we sustain the weary with a word of courage, righteousness, and hope. We pray. for leaders of nations and for civil authorities. May they listen compassionately to the voices crying out for food, medicine, dignity, and peace. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. For the holy city, Jerusalem, for our own city, Minneapolis, and for every community of the earth. May all violence and bloodshed cease. 
May civic leaders heed the message of reconciliation, and may all Earth's people prosper and have life in abundance. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. For all those who dedicate their lives to the protection and preservation of life, all doctors, nurses, researchers, and medical professionals. May they draw strength from Christ, crucified and risen, and know God's protection and peace, we pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. For all of the sick and suffering of the world, for those who are dying and those who have died, May they know God's healing grace and compassion and share fully in the victory of Christ's exaltation. We pray. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord. And holy God, we thank you for your loving mercy that we celebrate this week. And may we be people of expert mercy as we deal with the virus. May we show great love and compassion to all. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased with each one of us and to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Amen. And Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of my iniquity. And people of God, let us pray that our Sunday Eucharist will be acceptable to God, the Almighty and Holy One. May, May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for, for the praise and glory of his name, for our deliverance and all his holy children. Through the passion of your only Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for all sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all your angels and saints and with the church around the world, 
we sing your praises. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and willingly entered into his passion. Jesus took bread and said the blessing. And he broke the bread and he gave it to them saying, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim you. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church, all your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity and justice, together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, and Bernard, our local bishop, and all the baptized and those preparing for baptism. And remember, our brothers and sisters who have died, especially those we bring to mind and heart on this holy day. Bring them all into the light of your presence. And we pray for your mercy that we too, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph and the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you always through your Son, Jesus, our Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, most holy God, forever and ever.
Together, we pray as Jesus taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and And may the peace of the risen Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. And if you're at home, you may offer each other a sign of peace at this time. We believe that this bread and wine is sacred and holy, that by the power of the Spirit, it has become for us the body and blood of the glorified risen Christ, who comes to us in this sacred meal, who comes to you at home, spiritually, filling your minds and hearts with his love. And happy are we who are called to the Lord's table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen.
nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us where you call. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Just like to remind you that we will have Mass on, uh, online next Sunday, Easter Sunday, in case you cannot get here. And I'd just like to say to those of you who are living alone, or two of you living alone, uh, if you need help on Easter for a meal, please contact us at the parish office so that we, as the people of Christ the King, may care for one another. We don't want anyone to worry about a meal on Easter Sunday. So um, Jim here has volunteered to cook a huge meal for the parish. No, I'm just kidding. And, uh, but please, I'm serious. Do not eat uh, scraps, you know. It is a festive day, a time of uh, a good meal. So if you need help, we will help you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our Eucharist is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll all sing together the song we know. <laughs>